what miracle were they looking for? They saw dangerous dimensions of God. But at the slightest opportunity, they bowed to bow. They committed adultery with Ashtaroth. Your heart must know this. So when you are blowing away in prayer, it is because you are in search of the administrator. Until you find the grace he administers, you cannot mount up with wings like eagles. You will pray and still be in this hall. And some others will pray and mount up into the heavens above. They will see his shape because he will allow them to see through his spirit and they will see his shape. He will allow them to hear through his spirit so they will hear his voice. And prayer becomes an interaction. It becomes an adventure. It becomes something you want to give yourself to forever because you are exploring the realm of the merchandise of life. So Matt Williams was asking, in the orbit, where are you? With respect to the sun, are you in the cold places of Pluto? You can migrate tonight. My adventure in prayer began because of my impediment, my speech impediment. I was born with a terrible stammering infirmity. And I had an encounter with God and God revealed to me that I was born to be a preacher. And I was wondering how a preacher could be a stammerer because I could not speak. So God started my journey with an infirmity that I did not have the capacity. There was no drug, no injection I could take that could help my speech impediment. I needed God. So he helped me by allowing me to have a limitation that doctors could not help, could not, my parents' counsel couldn't help. I only needed God. Are you with me? And when I pray, he insists that I'm a preacher. So one day I had time. It's all right, let me find you. And I lay on the altar fasting. Pray, fasting. Then I had an encounter. A scripture was, was placed on my spirit, man. That was the beginning. The Christ was beginning to administer something. And there was a wisdom that I had to know. So he laid the scripture upon my heart. He said, think through the scripture. Think through the scripture. Are you with me? Have you ever had the experience before you were just praying and the scripture just alights on your heart? Mm, you're already in, interfacing with the administrator. There is a wisdom that you need that is captured in that scripture in order for you to penetrate. The moment you come into the first field of his influence, he begins to teach you because you need alignment. He needs to take you from where you are in the corridor and bring you under Shekinah illumination. So he reaches out and drops a scripture on your heart. For me, the scripture he dropped was, as for you, this is the covenant I have with you. I have put my words in your mouth. I say, oh, he has a covenant with me. I was revealing. And he, it is his responsibility to put his words in my mouth. Ooh, that's great. So if he's the one putting the words in my mouth, it's no longer my responsibility to find out how to speak. He will, he will make sure I speak it. So I now realize that in order for me to preach, I need to go before him and, and find words from words. Once I get words from him. The ability to preach comes with the words he gives. And that's how I can preach on the pulpit. The symptoms of stammering will come back the moment I come in. So I know, I know that there is an administrator that is stronger than my speech impediment. So there is no limitation that you have on your life right now that he doesn't have an administrative response to it. Everything that the father wants to make available to you is under his hand in his administration. But first of all, you need to accept his government. The meaning of my life is what he says to me. That's life for me. I was telling some of our friends this morning, we were in a little Bible study session this morning. I was telling uh, our friends 
that I was in the oil industry in my country. And you need to be very intelligent and very, very favored for you to have the kind of job that I have. The oil industry accounts for 97% of our gross domestic product. And the kind of salary, we, the philosophy behind our payment system in Nigeria is that you are paid consistent to the performance of the industry that you find yourself. So being that the oil industry is the highest in the ladder, we were paid more than any other worker in the country. And I was good at what I did. I grew in the ranks. It was just two weeks to the time of the examination that will usher me into management cadre. And my Lord came and said, you need to drop your letter of resignation because it's time for you to be a full-blown missionary to take my counsel to the nations of the world. And I told him, I said, is it not to your glory for a manager to resign and say he wants to follow you. Just allow me sit there for one day and I'll go. A manager. <laughs> and the reason why I was appealing the instruction was because if you, if you retire as a manager, the, your, your retirement package is, is large. It's wise. Jesus. You need a manager on your team. Say, I'm, <laughs> oh, hallelujah. He said, now you have to stop it. So the meaning of my life in this stage of my life is that he said I should resign and go to the nations of the world and proclaim his majesty. That is my preoccupation. Do you understand that? It is his throne that gives me essence, relevance. Because the Bible says that he created, all things were created by him and for him. So you exist for him. Most of us are still existing for ourselves and that's why you are weak and powerless. That's why you are still in Pluto. Minus 250 degrees Fahrenheit. Some others have migrated. Some others like the fires of his presence and the impact of his government. When I left that place, my colleagues say, oh, the witches that have been looking for this boy, they have finally succeeded on his life. We always knew witches were looking for him to, do, to bring injury to his destiny. Now we have confirmed it. And I didn't have any opportunity to explain. Imagine how it would look like among my family members. Imagine, imagine. And there were so many people that, were, that I was sponsoring to school. Those ones didn't have the courage to come and tell me that. How are we going to... <laughs> going to manage their fears I knew people didn't believe that Jesus spoke to me but that was not relevant because it was Jesus that took me from the wilderness from the backside of the wilderness and he guided me he spoke about the job on the 13th day of when he sent and that was the first time I saw an angel in my life 13th day of uh, January 2003 he sent an angel to me at at 11.45 p.m. Nigerian time. He said, you will not go into full-time ministry. I will give you a job. And you will invest in many destinies. And a great network will be formed. That was the day I received that. And so I was investing in many destinies according to the instruction. And then he came again and said, I've come to set you free. 16th of August, 2019. I've come to set you free. So that where I am, there also will my servant be. So I had to ask him, am I bound? He said, your job is your bondage now. It is time for you to go to the nations of the world. And I'll send you to the United Kingdom. I'll send you to Ghana. And I'll send you to South Africa. I am here today. Because one of your sons came to us. I'm not a Pentecostal tongue-talking Christian because of Pentecost. I'm not a Pentecostal tongue-talking Christian because of Azusa. I am a Pentecostal tongue-talking, demon-casting Christian 
because there was a man called Pi Elton, one of your sons that came to our shores. He brought Jesus. And that's why we're here today on the soil of the United Kingdom. To bring Jesus back. Because since our ancestor, Pi Elton, brought Jesus, he brought the character of Jesus, he brought, he brought the power of Jesus. So we could do no less. So I had to resign my appointment. Because Jesus, the administrator, he says so. Because we were created by him. We were created what? For him. And it was the design of the father. In the chapter of the eternal purpose that he should be preeminent in all things. So the question is, is he preeminent in your life? Is the extent to which he has found his place of preeminence in your life that will characterize the potency of your prayer? There is an angulation. There is an alignment of the heart to that office that is in the spirit in order to bring the dimensions of God down. If you understood that, I think I can't go to my scripture anymore. Matthew 18. I think this is the lesson for the night. So we need to go into practicals. How to set your heart to his throne because the bible says that we should come boldly to the throne of grace to the place where grace is administered it's an invitation to everyone that is in christ jesus come boldly come boldly do you come do you respond to the invitation on a daily basis come boldly so we want to go to the throne of grace that place where grace is found That is the place where things that are about to die revive. That is the place where things that are lost are found. That is the place where things that are taken can be restored. I know that place. It's a place where my weakness is swallowed. My fears are swallowed. And the spirit of faith comes upon my heart. That is the place where my weakness is taken away. And it is exchanged for the spirit of power. Oh, if you know the place I speak of, there is nothing that is left for you to fear. I need to tell you my story before we round up. We went to a remote place to preach the gospel. So we put 5 p.m. on the publicity material. Meanwhile, the guys are farmers. It doesn't matter what is on your poster, on your flyer. They will start coming by 7. Whether you put 5 o'clock, 3 o'clock, that's for you. They will go to farm first. <laughs> so they, they all went to farm. And when they came back from the farm, there's something called pounded yam. Do you know yam here? Yam. Do you know yam? My white brothers, you, you know yam? So there's a delicacy we call pounded yam. That's the real food from where I'm coming from, not mushrooms. I, just, I saw mushrooms and all. I, I had to pray. I said, Lord, help me. So I, I've not been in touch with pounded yam for some time since I came on this mission field. And if you're from Africa and you have not had pounded yam, you have not eaten. So for all the days I've been here, I've not eaten. So these guys will go to the farm, come back from the farm, pound, pounded yam, and eat with okra soup. You, you know okra? Yes. And when you eat that, after laboring on the farm, you will sleep first. Yes. And then when they recover themselves from sleep, they will now say, we are hearing some sound. <laughs> so we prayed. We started opening prayer by five, and we prayed. And they were not coming. So I told my tour guide, I have a leading. Let's visit the shrine of the village. Meanwhile, don't do what I did. I was late. All right? Don't just wake up and get excited. Yeah? So it was not excitement. I was led to visit the shrine. And the shrine is where the strong man of the land is. The one that sacrifices blood to the 22 altars of the community. 
the most dreaded individual among men. And the Lord said, pay him a visit. So I told the, my tour guide, do you know where the shrine is? They look at the shrine of the community. He said, yes, I was born here. Okay, let's visit the place. And when we were approaching, the guy had the priest. He was 100 years old as at the time I met him. I was 36 then. Okay, I was 36 years old then. It's a long time ago. He was 100 years old. And he had given blood to all the altars and the spirits were excited. And normally, if they accept his offering, they give him a song to sing. A song that is inspired by the demons. And so that song was on his lips when we were, when we were coming. It means the spirits were agitated. They were excited at the offerings. And we were marching towards the, the place. And the man got interested. He turned around and said, hey, who are you? Because he wasn't respecting anybody. He was most feared. Nobody visits, visits him except someone that has problems, has trouble. You have someone that's mad. You want him to minister to the mad person. There is this unexplainable kind of sickness and, you know, that kind of stuff. So he, he saw we were healthy. We didn't need his help. So he asked us, hey, who are you? And I told my interpreter, tell him, we have come in peace. He looked at us with suspicion. Peace. Only for him to realize that the spirits that were following him from the shrine had left. Upon our arrival, he wasn't as strong as he was when he was singing. And he, he tried to threaten us. That, and I told him clearly, if you don't put that your hand down, I will curse it and it will wither. So he, he looked for a, a smart way. I don't know how, it's one way. And he, <laughs> <laughs> he brought the hand down, brought the hand down. Meanwhile, as, as all of these things were going on, I was connecting with Jesus. I said, can you reveal something about this man? And he told me he has a chest condition that is 13 years old, chest pain. I said, oh, the demons you said, they were not able to heal you of your chest pain that is 13 years old. He said, you need a seat. <laughs> so, so he sat down. And I was, I opened the scripture and began to talk to him. And then the nine elders that support him in his priesthood, old men with walking stick, they now came into the place. So I began to talk to them. My interpreter was interpreting. It was like for 30 minutes, 30 minutes. And they accepted Jesus Christ. And, and I insisted. I insisted that they, they should kneel down to accept Jesus. So they were kneeling. Accepted Jesus. I asked them to, for, to renounce the spirits of the altar. And they did. And I prayed for them. And blessed them. And prayed for his chest pain. And God healed him. Then I left him. Then we came down from the mountain top. By the time we got down from the mountain top, the people started attending. The people had slept, eaten pounded yam, okra soup, and now they were on the crusade ground. It was about 10 p.m. in the night. And when we came to the crusade ground, the witches in the territory never knew that the um, mast, which was the altar, was no longer powerful. They didn't know that. During the praise and worship, people that were crippled started standing up from wheelchairs. No preacher. No preacher on the pulpit. A man close to me stood up and he could not believe that he was, was his legs. So he, he touched them. If he wants to look at me, I will remove because I don't know. <laughs> there were three people that rose up from their wheelchairs without a preacher. By the time I came, my job was simple. There was already evidence on ground that Jesus could heal. Three plus ten. Okay, ten other crippled people walked. So when the witches saw that uh, the people that they had afflicted were walking free of affliction, they ran away from the crusade ground. We left our Bibles on the pulpit and we followed after them. 
the deliverance continued till like 2 a.m yes by 3 a.m in the morning the, the village was free of satanic power <laughs> and that was not because we were strong that was because we aligned to the source of power you will live a small life if you don't know the office of this great Christ for the Bible says of the father are ye in Christ Jesus he is the fulcrum of our civilization as New Testament believers he's the one that has everything that the father wants to give us in custody so he is designed to be the most important personality in our lives God himself has ordained that he should be preeminent. Oh my God. You know, an ordinary believer is different from a forgiving believer. You know that? You also know, do you also know that an ordinary believer is different from a consecrated believer? A, a believer that has come to understand that the meaning of my life is Christ. So I submit to his authority completely. From henceforth, he will stir my life in the direction of his pleasing. That's what makes you close to him. And when you cry, he will come and find out what, what troubles you. Just like he will come in a moment now. <laughs> he will walk through this place. I will tell you what he's doing. And those things will happen in the natural as a means of showing you the practicality that you can pray and see your prayers answered in seconds in minutes it takes seven seconds to hear the voice of God if you're in the right place seven seconds to hear the voice of God I wonder how people that cannot hear his voice how they survive tonight we're going to migrate are migrating and angulating so that he will shine on your heart and grant you such light that will give you the ability to walk through darkness can we rise on our feet as we seek Jesus oh my easy now this is what you will do forget about your neighbor some of you came with your spouses forget about your wife for now and and begin to adventure into heaven aligning your heart with jesus forget about the person by your side empty your heart of your concerns your challenges and let's go in search of jesus he sits on the throne and he extends an invitation to us he said come boldly therefore to the throne of grace You will find mercy. You will obtain grace. I can hear your prayer. I can hear your prayer. We are in the prayer storm right now. As we gain ascendancy. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. He wants to strike the chords of your heart. And play the strings on your heart like a, a like a string instrument, like a guitar, like a harp. There is a realm of harmony that he wants you to experience. So he sends out the invitation: come, come to the throne of grace. Siebo come nile tila makoria suveli mantokesi avato skito bre afalatambros kafoto makeliata Before him a little one becomes a thousand Before him a strong small one becomes a strong nation And though you are beginning